Hi, my dear friends, your guest over here. It's been a long time. I know in eighth class, we couldn't do it in the right manner, right? But now in ninth class, I'm just rectifying all the mistakes which have happened from my side. And I'm starting the ninth academic year. Now, basically ninth, this year I'm only going to teach you science and social. Okay, science and social. Now, in science, we have three branches, as, uh, you know, like last year, biology, chemistry, physics. And in social, we have an extra subject inside it or extra branch that is economics. So let's talk about social in the social videos. But now let's understand, you know, let's understand. First, first of all, let me introduce you the first chapter of biology. Okay, we're going to start with biology. The first chapter of biology is cell, the fundamental unit of life. Okay. Now, of course, there might be questions. What is fundamental and what is a cell? Okay. And basically, before understanding the term fundamental, first we have to know what is a cell. Now, cell is a basic structure and functional unit. It is given over here, down of the what is a cell. Now, you know what is basic over here? Basic is nothing but fundamental. Fundamental is nothing but base. It's a base. It's a basic thing. Okay. A cell is a basic thing. Uh, you know, cell is the smallest unit. It's a basic unit of our life. That's the reason it is fundamental. It is fundamental unit. It is basic unit. Both are the same. Now, why is it structural and why is it functional? Now, you could see here, you know, these bricks, these walls, these buildings. Okay, you might be thinking that why is Augusta now teaching you uh, civil engineering or something related to the buildings, architect, those are, no, I'm not going that side. Basically, there is some connection between cells and the bricks. You know, what is that? Now, we know that a cell is a basic structural unit. Why is it structural? You know, our cell plays a very important role in making an organism. It in turn or it indirectly makes up an uh, uh, organism. How? Now we know that a group of cells form uh, tissue, a group of tissues form an organ, an organ, uh, you know, and again, these group of organs will form an organ system, right? Similarly, group of organ systems will form an organism. We know this. It's, it's a, pro it's, you know, it's a process of making of an organism. It starts with a small unit, with the fundamental basic unit. If that unit is not there, this organism is not possible, right? That's the reason it is structural. It forms a structure. It, it is the first step to create a structure for the organism, right? Getting it? And this cell is also known as a building block of, you know, uh, it is known as a building block of an organism. And now why is it functional? Okay. Now, basically, it is functional because uh, in a cell, okay, basically the cells, now, now let me take an example of a human being like me, like you, people who are watching over there. Now we are made up of cells. We have different cells. Okay, you can see here different types of cells, stem cells, uh, intestinal cells, blood cells, muscle cells. Now basically here, nerve cells, nothing but neuron in common language has its own function. Blood cells has its own function. Intestinal cells has uh, its own function. Muscle cells has its own function. Liver cells has its own function. Like e each and every cell in a human body has a specific function to fulfill certain life processes. Like couldn't it be respiration or any other process, whatever life processes we have. You know, there are certain cells which play a very important role. So of course, you know, cells have certain functions which helps to fulfill the duties or which helps to fulfill the life processes of a human being. Okay. Now, of course, now it depends. It varies among the organisms. It, uh, you know, the function of a cell is different in this, or uh, in a unicellular and multicellular. That we're going to learn when we get into the chapter. Now, next question over here is, how was this cell discovered? Okay. Now, we basically say it was discovered somewhat 400 to 500 years back. At that time, they didn't have a microscope and all. It might be a few questions. But the fact is that the microscope had come up, you know, nearly in 1600s itself at the later end of the 17th century. 
Okay, you could see this person over here. He's none other than Robert Hook. So what this person do? He had discovered the cell. Basically, it's not the living cell. It's a dead cell. It was a plant cell, basically. So what, you know, uh, when he was passing by, I guess he found a cork. Cork is nothing but a part of the bark of the tree. You know, right? What is bark? Uh, it's just a part, a substance of the bark of the tree. Then he took that substance and he... Uh, he ha he already had a self designed microscope so he took that uh, under you know he took that what do you say that uh, that cork what do you say that particular cork and he kept it under his self designed microscope and he was noticing it he was just having a look on it and he could notice few compartments over there he could notice few compartments over there few compartments which were partitioned right now this person Okay, what Robert Hooke did, he found out, he discovered something new over there. Now he coined, okay, this, uh, that particular thing, what he discovered as cell. Cell is nothing but, uh, you know, little root. Cell is a Latin word and in, when you translate to English, it is nothing but a little root. Now this is about the introduction about cell. And what are we going to learn in our future classes? It's only about... Uh, types of cells on the basis of uh, number of cells like unicellular, multicellular. We are going to learn about the structural things in cells. We learned about uh, cell membrane and uh, nucleus, cytoplasm and extra, uh, you know, uh, additional layer to a cell for the plant cells called cell wall. We learned in our previous classes. Now, in this class, basically we are going to learn all the cell organelles in the cytoplasm in a detailed manner so even we are going to learn few processes which take you know which takes place in the you know basically in the cell membrane like a diffusion osmosis we're going to learn about those two in different solutions hypertonic hypotonic and isotonic and we'll also learn the two types of cell divisions in this chapter even uh, we'll learn about the cell theory, which we are going to learn in our next video. Okay, so this is what we are going to learn in this chapter. And this is, of course, the easiest chapter. We are learning this from uh, past a uh, lot of, you know, few classes from fifth to, uh, yeah, we are learning this topic from fifth or sixth class, I feel. So it's uh, already a known topic and we can ace it. We can just crack this topic easily. Okay, I hope you understood this introduction, like, what is a cell? Why is it fundamental? Why is it structural? Why is it functional? And I, I even hope that you understand the discovery of the cell. Okay. So thank you guys. Signing off, Agastya.